Welcome to PM Fundamentals, The Basics. I'm your host, Nathaniel Quintana. Let's get on this journey and see what we can learn about project management in general and get a good overview of what project management is and maybe even an idea of how we can apply this stuff to everyday life. Let's have at it. Okay, now that we know what a project is and we know the definition of a project, so a project, temporary unique, project management, who does what by when, how much, there you go, that seems pretty simple, right? Probably much more complex than that, but well, let's, not, let's not worry about that at this point. Let's be concerned about really how do we do this and what, what's it all about. There is an international best practice out there put together by the Project Management Institute. This is an organization of hundreds and thousands, millions, well, maybe not millions, but there are hundreds and thousands of people out there come together and create a standard that anyone can use at any point within any industry to do a project for something that's temporary and unique. And they need to know who does what by when and how much is going to cost. So, basically, the Project Management Institute has created this standard. This standard has five process groups. So let's talk about these five process groups, okay? First process group, initiating. What's that mean? Well, initiating is getting started. You've got to know what you do. You're kind of defining what your project is. From there, you're planning. This is defining the objectives and the course you're going to take in order to complete your project. Then you have executing. Executing is a way of integrating people and resources in order to carry out this idea that you put together in those objectives and that whole concept of getting the project done. That's doing the work. Then you have this monitoring and controlling idea. Monitoring and controlling is all about taking measurements and seeing if you're doing what you want to do and seeing if there's any variances in that execution phase that you're doing. Closing, this is the formalization of turning over your product, your service, or your results and say, look, I'm all done. The project's complete. I've converted this beat up pickup truck into an electric vehicle. Well, not yet. I hope to do that soon. I haven't defined my project all the way, and I haven't done the planning yet. So I don't know how long it's going to take me yet. But one day, this old pickup truck is going to be converted into an electric vehicle. Want to help? Consider it. As we said before, let's look at this in a different way as far as these process groups, okay? These process groups fit together and they go, kind of go hand in hand. They're not necessarily linear. They work in this manner. You're first starting off with initiation. Then start planning. Begin execution. Maybe replan again. Be sure to monitor and control all these activities. And then close out the project. That's how these five process groups work together. Right here, this pattern right here, they all work together. They're a big system, right? One big system of this, it's, it's almost like a process. We're saying project management's like a process, but you're doing it for something temporary and unique. You gotta start off, you gotta end, and you gotta do all that controlling of all that planning and execution all together. So this is a great graphic to understand what project management is and its process groups involved. Alrighty, now that we know these process groups, what do we do with this information? Is there more to know about project management? Is it really this simple, just you know, doing this initiation, this planning, this execution, controlling, you know, and then closing out afterwards after doing the whole monitoring controlling during this process? Well, there's, I think there's a lot more to know. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna kinda talk about some knowledge areas. There are nine knowledge areas within the same standard. I don't expect you to know all these knowledge areas. What we're doing right now, since this is kind of an overview of what the project management is and what uh, we want to do with all this stuff, really what I want to do is I want to introduce you to these concepts of the knowledge areas. Okay? So let's walk through these and we'll talk about each one. I'm going to refer to my notes because I don't want to accidentally give you misinformation. We want to make sure you understand these knowledge areas. Like I said, we're introducing them to you and giving you the general idea. So let's start off with idea number one. How about knowledge area of integration? This is making sure all the parts are working together. That's what integration's about. That seems simple. Scope. What's in, what's not. You gotta know what's in your project and what's not. There's also time management. Basically, your timeline. Your start, your end. It's a calendar of events, if you will, for your project. That's the timeline, or time management. Cost. That's your budget. What are you spending? How much do you expect to spend when you convert this beat up pickup truck? Do you know how much it's going to cost? I think the general idea is you need to better do your research to see 
because I bet it could be a lot. Maybe it's cheap, maybe it's only 100 bucks to convert it. But a motor itself, or an electric motor, might cost more than that. Something to think about. You need to know what your budget is. Next thing to consider is quality management. Quality? Who cares about quality, right? This is a project. You're just trying to produce something, aren't you? But you want to produce something of quality. A product that is good, a product that you can be proud of, or a service, or a result that you can be proud of. Simply think about it this way. Making sure your service product result is good, right? What about human resource management? What does that mean, human resource? Basically, that's the teamwork. That's what's important. Think about the teamwork, especially when you're working on a team. If you're doing it by yourself, teamwork is you, but you might need to convert to experts or other people like that. So consider that. Resource, human resource management, teamwork. And the last knowledge area, communications. What does communications mean? Simple. Communicating. Kind of like I'm doing now. Figure out who you're going to communicate. Who does what by when? Who communicates to who by when? That's something you want to figure out in your communications too. I tricked you. That wasn't the last one, was it? That was only, what, seven of the nine? We've got two more. What about risk management? You've got to have your project risk management as well. This is alternative plans and options that you might run into. Your plans might not go exactly the way you want, so you need to have other alternatives and options out there as you move forward. Maybe you can't buy this motor for electric truck. Maybe you have to buy a different motor. That's risk management. What if it starts raining for an event you're going to do? How are you going to handle that? That's risk management. You've got to have alternatives. The last one to consider, this is really the last one is procurement management. What does procurement management mean? That means you need to know what you're buying, where you're buying, and how you're buying it. That's procurement. What you're buying, how you're buying it, where you're buying it. And you need to know all about those buying options for you. That's the important part of your procurement management. Like I said before, just wanted to introduce you to these knowledge areas. I don't expect you to know all the ins and outs and details, the tools, the techniques related to each of these management ideas and concepts. We'll get those in later parts of it, and then you'll get to know it. you get to see what it's all about. Uh, we'll have more lessons here on the website, so be sure to check that out. Uh, looking forward to it. So, the question is, not all projects will use all these knowledge areas or all these process groups. They'll probably use most of the process, process groups because you definitely want to initiate it. Got to have an idea of what you want to do. You're probably going to close it. You want to be able to say you're done because it has a different start and finish. Plus, you're probably going to do a little bit of planning. You're probably going to do a little bit of executing. You might do some controlling. Not always. It depends on the complexity and the dynamics of the project you're doing. Same with the knowledge areas. Bacon cupcakes might not be as complex as converting a truck into an electric vehicle. Could do different complexities by far. So just remember that you can use the different tools and techniques from these different concept areas as far as knowledge areas in order to move forward and to manage your projects. Very important to remember. So I want to say thank you to our sponsors also, Harvest PM. Check out their website right here, as well as Candy Corn Production. Without these lovely sponsors, I wouldn't be able to bring these lessons to you. So why don't you have a wonderful day, and don't forget, if there's this the only lesson out right now, go ahead and go take the post-assessment. If you took this lesson before the pre and post-assessment, that's okay. Don't forget the pre-assessment and the post-assessment located right here on this website. Thanks for your time, and you have a great evening, morning, noon, whatever it may be. Take care.